Hi folks, it's James here. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a response to a thread uh, which has been started by uh, Rachel, the Music Man, BC. Uh, check her out if you haven't already. Uh, great channel. <clears throat> she's a Beatles fan. Um, lots of other things too. Squeeze fan, so she's got good taste. Uh, <laughs> likes classic rock. I think she's up in Canada. Um, very interesting person. I've had some nice chats with her. So she wants us to uh, show some records um, where we enjoy the vocals, uh, the singing. And uh, quite surprised that this has not been done before. Um, it seems a fairly obvious topic, but like all the best ideas, I suppose, um, nobody thinks of them until all of a sudden somebody does. Okay, so uh, here we go. Um, I kind of talk a bit as we go. I'm not going to do too much more of an introduction, really, because we could be here all night, couldn't we? Uh, the first one, I'm going to go with um, John Lennon actually, and the first song on his first um, solo album, which is Mother. I mean, it's a very intense vocal performance. I'm sure you've all heard it. He was having some weird alternative therapy to try and kind of exercise his demons and everything, and it really does come pouring out in that track. You know, all his, his just his feelings of primal horror, you know, having lost his mother in that awful way and having grown up without her and it just all comes spilling out of him it's very raw it's very anguished it's very difficult to listen to um john lennon was not like paul mccartney he was not out to entertain people and give people a, a fun time you know he was there to express something pretty damn heavy and he did it on that track vocally um an extraordinary performance uh right next one um Moving a bit forward in time to the, this is the early 1980s, yeah it was. This is The Pretenders and my favourite song by them is uh, Show Me. I love Chrissy Hines' vocal performance on it. I love the video for it. She's as cool as anything in that video. Check it out if you haven't seen it. But her vocal performance, it's very sensitive sounding. You know, it's quite an upbeat pop song with this lovely kind of jangly guitar on it but there's something about her voice it's very appealing it's the kind of voice that makes you sort of fall in love with her as you you know as you're listening to it but again part of that is the beauty of the song i suppose it's just a very very beautiful uplifting song uh, and she sings it superbly well you know right now i wanted to show this one because this guy does not get enough credit i don't think he gets knocked a lot and some of that is justified because he did do a lot of records which were maybe a bit middle of the road and a bit unremarkable and vocally he often didn't put himself out there you know he was often very undemonstrative as a singer but this song uh, was uncharacteristically full-on um, as in a bit like the John Lennon track he just absolutely poured himself into it and the song in question is is Layla by Eric Clapton which had been written, um, he'd fallen in love with George Harrison's wife, Patty, Patty Boyd, uh, who'd become Patty Harrison, and he couldn't, he couldn't go with her because he was because she was married to George Harrison, and and um, you know George was Eric's best friend at the time. Obviously, he did end up going with her, but during this period, that hadn't happened yet, and he was drinking heavily. He was addicted to heroin, I think. He was becoming addicted, and he was in a terrible state. And the vocal performance on Layla, I mean, it's one of those songs that you sort of you take it for granted, really, because you've heard it a trillion times, you know. But if you listen to the song, and li just listen to the sheer, just heart-wrenching anguish that he pours into that song, it's not the kind of singing that he'd ever done before, really, and he didn't really ever do it again after that. It was like a once a one-time career high. It was like, let's just do the most incredible, impassioned vocal performance, uh, and then kind of never do that again. Um, and I think Layla, because it's got such a monumental guitar riff in it, people chiefly remember it for the guitar riff, but in fact the, the vocal performance when you tune into it is pretty damn intense and amazing. So I thought I'd highlight that one for Clapton. This next one, a complete contrast. I've been getting into some early Bee Gees, and I'm going to do a video on uh, on them at some point, uh, but, but there's a track on this album, <clears throat> this is Idea, which is one of their 60s records, I think it came out in the late 60s. There's a song called Kilburn Towers on this record, which has a lead vocal by Barry Gibb, and it is just the most beautiful song, um, f wonderful sounding record, very sort of drifty, elegiac sounding, um, quite kind of autumnal, nostalgic kind of feel but his voice is so 
a kind of like just laid back, blissed out sounding. It's like a reverie, you know, absolutely wonderful, sort of silky. I mean, the Bee Gees, I mean, you know, were there any greater pop singers ever? I mean, they were all fantastic. Uh, but on that song, I think Barry, Barry really delivers the goods. You know, it's quite a low key song. It doesn't jump out at you, but it, it's incredibly beautiful. And um, I think a large part of that is due to Barry's performance. Let's show the big fella. There he is. Barry Gibb. Right. OK, so next. It's Etta James. This is her album, Tell Mama. And the song I'm going to go for, actually, is the title track, Tell Mama, which is just, you know, you could strip paint with it. It's a fantastic vocal performance. Um, she often gets overlooked, you know, when people talk about great early blues artists, they often talk about the men, you know, Howlin' Wolf and, um, you know, Sonny Boy Williamson and Muddy Waters, who are all obviously great. Um, but Etta James was great as well, and she was so influential. On this album, uh, there's the song um, I'd Rather Go Blind, which um, what, uh, Rod Stewart covered. And um, very, very full on, you know, just um, she knew how to let rip. Can't be beat. Um, right, OK, yes, yeah, so complete contrasts. Wanted to highlight this guy, one of my favourite male singers. This is Robert Plant, Principle of Moments, the album from, is it 83? Um, and the song Big Log which was one of the first songs I heard by Robert Plant and um, just a wonderful performance. Very bluesy, very mysterious, very enigmatic sounding. Again, it's a lovely record. Um, it's got fantastic guitar playing on there <clears throat> by Robbie Blunt and just a great atmospheric production. But his voice is very, it's got a very desolate feel to it, you know, very, um, you know, he was really into African music and it's got a very African-y kind of blues vibe to it. A bit like Eric Clapton again, a bit like Layla, sort of maybe a career high for him. Well, he's quite early in his career, he's only three albums into his career, uh, but a great song. A bit of reggae, I uh, wanted to highlight this guy because not necessarily somebody that people have heard of. This is Max Romeo uh, from the album um, War in a Babylon. You know, Max Romeo was a very politically aware <clears throat> singer-songwriter uh, from Jamaica, and his stuff is very righteous and... Um, you know, quite hard sounding. The song on this record, which I totally love because of the singing largely, and also because it's a great song, um, is the song Uptown Babies, where he sings, uh, you know, Uptown Babies Don't Cry, They Don't Know What Suffering Is Like. You know, it's a sort of ghetto song about kids who are lucky enough to grow up in a nice neighbourhood and, you know, they don't really know, they don't understand the meaning of suffering. Um, it's a very, very powerful song, carries it, he carries it off with a huge amount of authority and power, uh, and that's what makes it so powerful, I think. Um, right, another lady, Kate Bush, one of the greatest female singers of all time. Now, Richard McCook uh, chose Wuthering Heights. I'm going to go for, uh, off side one of this record, this is, um, this is Never Forever. I'm going to go for the opening song, uh, which is Babushka which is a very magical sounding song. It's got a lovely, fluffy kind of quality to it. It's slightly uncanny though, like all her work is, you know, sort of mysterious sounding, quite magical sounding. And her voice is beautifully produced. I mean, all her records have that kind of, you know, magical fairy dust production, uh, but she sounds so fantastic on this, uh, on this particular song. Just the way she goes from the verse into the chorus and she does all these amazing swoops, you know, all those Kate Bush type swoops. Um, just love her voice, love that song. And there she is, pretending to be a bat on the cover. Now Kate. Right, a bit of reggae again, this time uh, a lady. This is uh, Susan Cadogan. And um, this is a fantastic album on Trojan. The song I want to highlight on this record. I'll put a playlist down below, by the way, so you can check these out. Uh, the song Don't You Burn Your Bridges on this record is fantastically... Um, smoldery she's got uh, i mean it's got that kind of deep murky kind of lee scratch perry production but her voice is very silky it's very enigmatic sounding also on this album as well her version of um fever is fantastic as well i'm saying the word fantastic a lot in this video i do apologize um but certainly don't you burn your bridges um has a very particular atmosphere to it and a large um, part of that is due to the just the enigmatic quality of her voice apparently she became a librarian in the when her career finally stalled, she just went off and became a librarian. So, um, yeah, shame she didn't become more famous than she was, really. 
because that's a really truly great vocal performance on that. Uh, right, next one. So um, I wanted to highlight this guy because he doesn't have, this is of course Elvis Costello, um, doesn't have a traditionally what you think of as a great voice. You know, in fact, his voice is, can be quite grating. But on this record, this is the album he made in 1986, and it was his kind of rootsy album. Um, he did it with uh, T-Bone Burnett, and there's lots of slow songs, country-tinged songs, you know, Americana and all that kind of thing. But the song on this record that almost brings a tear to my eye, because it's so beautiful, is the first song on side two, uh, American Without Tears, and Elvis sings the hell out of it. You know, it, it's extremely... Um, it's a fascinating lyric. It's almost like a movie. You know, you get sucked into this strange narrative and the tune is gorgeous. The arrangement is beautiful and he sings it in this, just this incredibly expressive voice. If you think of all the people who came out of that new wave movement, you know, most of them couldn't sing like that. Elvis was able to evolve as a singer and, you know, he ended up doing some cracking stuff in the 80s where he really... He sort of turned into a bit of a crooner in a way, but it wasn't generic crooning. He found his own way of doing it, and uh, his voice was always very expressive, and um, that's certainly a very, very beautiful uh, song and a great performance. Okay, we've got three more. Now this one, I wanted to, I've been wanting to talk about this record for ages, and I probably would end up talking about it on another video, but I'll talk quickly about it here. This is uh, Suzanne Vega <clears throat> and the album um, Suzanne Vega. I think it was her first album. Um, came out in 1985, I think it was, is she from New York? Singer-songwriter, really good, really excellent. We don't hear enough about her, I don't think, on the VC. The song on this record that I totally love uh, is um, Marlene on the Wall, which uh, is a very kind of um, nostalgic sounding song. Even though I don't think I knew the song at the time, back in the 80s, but when I listen to it now, it makes me nostalgic for the 80s. And her voice is very undemonstrative on it. She doesn't sort of try and do anything too in your face. She just sings the tune. And there's something very kind of lovelorn about her voice. It's very, um, I don't know, you can really tap into the emotion in the song. It's just a really nicely understated performance. And I think, I think she was a really, really interesting songwriter. Very kind of stream of consciousness. Um, but her tunes are all beautiful. You know, she sang, she had these just lovely chord sequences and um, she came up in the sort of, you know, in the 1980s, but she was quite traditional in the way she wrote songs. She didn't try and be too provocative, you know. She was just very, very melodic and very sensitive. And uh, yeah, I just love that song, Malena on the Wall by Suzanne Vega. Right, so I've saved two for last, which I think are among the greatest ever vocal performances in, you know, what you might call pop music. Um, I, I wasn't sure which way to put them, which way round to put them. I wanted to end with my absolute favourite, and I couldn't, I couldn't decide in the end. I have put the one, which I think I'm going to say is my favourite, but it could change on a different day. Um, just wanted to highlight um, Carl Wilson's vocal performance on God Only Knows, which Paul McCartney described as the greatest song ever written, I think, when he heard it back in 1966. And I wonder how many people know that it was not sung by Brian Wilson. Um, Carl, Carl sang it in this kind of golden, rich voice, amazingly expressive. I mean, there were very few singers around back in the 60s who could take a song like that, which is a great song, but I mean, do it justice and then some, you know, really, um, he made it sound like he was just like an angel sat on a cloud, you know, just there's something about the way his vocal is just suffused with all this, almost like a kind of divine energy. And it just it rises and just fills the soundscape, you know, and um, it's a very magical sound. I think the production has got a lot to do with it. Uh, and the arrangement as well, but I mean, you know, his 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 vocal performance is is quite extraordinary. I think um, on um, God only knows, Carl Wilson. And so to finish, like I said, um, look at that. I picked the wrong record. I meant to pick. I meant to pick the first album by the band. Um, I've gone and picked the second album by the band. So the song in question is not on this record. The song I wanted to highlight is the final song 
on the first band album, which is a cover version of Bob Dylan's I Shall Be Released, uh, which is sung by Richard Manuel. All the members of the band could sing. They all had great voices. Even the drummer had a great voice. Um, you know, Rick Danko had a great voice, but it was something about there was something about Richard Manuel's voice. It had a true frailty to it, and it was a very vulnerable voice, and it kind of beckoned you into this this very um, emotionally fragile world, I suppose. And the way he sings, "I shall be released," it just it drips beauty, and it's so emotionally resonant. So didn't pick the right record, but um, at least I picked the one that has a photo of him on the cover anyway. So. Uh, that's Richard Manuel uh, from the band and the song I Shall Be Released. Okay, that's your lot, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to Rachel for this uh, thread. Check her out. I'll put a link in the video description below. And if I'm feeling clever, I'll even put one up there too. Okay, folks, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.